Good morning to you all. It's the 14th of June and I pray that you've had a good week and that your loved ones are safe and well. Gosh, it's been such a long time since we've seen each other and just spent some time together worshipping our Lord. But we will refrain from opening the church just yet and we will wait until the winter has passed and then we will meet again. We're going to explore other avenues of worshipping together, so please watch the space and uh, we will let you know as, as things happen how we're going to be worshipping. We've also started care groups and I know that most of you have been allocated to a group and to a care leader. If you're not in a group yet and you'd like to be in a group, please would you contact me and let me know and I will see that you're placed into a group. It's so important for us to be in a group, a place where you are cared for and where you can care for each other. It's something that's very important. Even if you're not members of Menandi Methodist Church and you'd like to be part of a caring community, then please contact me um, and we will take care of you. So last week we started the new preaching series, hashtag Goliath Must Fall. Today we continue with that and we have a look at the next topic in the series. We, we're going to be looking at six giants in our lives um, and how we can actually just work with that. And, and today we're looking at hashtag fear must fall. We're talking about the giants in our lives and, and right at the start let me say that there's no giant in your life that is bigger than Jesus. God has a plan for us to face the giants in our lives. And we're going to look at these five giants over the next couple of weeks. We all wrestle with the same things in our lives. And, and today we're going to be looking at the giant of fear. This is a big deal in the Bible. And we're told all the time, do not fear, do not be afraid. Because fear must be the biggest giant in our lives. Why? Because it diminishes the glory of God in our lives. We need not look for this giant. It's there every day. And we face it every day. And it taunts us day after day after day. And all it does is it diminishes God's glory in our lives. It doesn't diminish God. But it diminishes God's glory in our lives because we're just not big enough to deal with it. But let me tell you, Jesus is bigger than any giant in my life. His name is bigger than anxiety or worry or stress or terror. They tell me that most prescribed drugs are written for these giants than for any other illness. Sometimes we reach for a bottle, but the bottom of a bottle has never solved any problems. We use all kinds of things to erase fear in our lives, and perhaps the best place to start is, how do we define fear? Well, fear is when we believe that apart from or in spite of my best effort, something undesirable is going to happen and I can't stop it. Fear has a root. Waking up at 2 a.m. for that cold sweat, why? There, there are three roots for fear and the first one is conditioning. We're brought, up, we're brought up with fear. A, a parent or a grandparent who are grand champion warriors. They speak about all the bad thing that, things that are going to happen. You can't do this and you can't do that because... And it's always the bad things that are going to happen. And we start becoming conditioned to this fear. Um, we also see the things that, that other people fear. And because they are scared of it, we become scared of it. And we're conditioned. 
we, we're too scared to, to face it, we're too scared to do something about it, because this is just how it is. The second thing is concealing stuff. Double-minded man is unstable in all his ways according to the book of Proverbs. When we hide things, when we conceal things under the fabric of our lives, we, we live looking over our shoulders. We're always scared that somebody might find out. Sometimes we hide things away well, sometimes we don't. And then there's control. There are people who, who always just want to control everything and they try to run everybody's lives. I, I want all things to end up the way I want them to end up and we want to control the situation, the destiny and the outcome. Controlling people create fear in our lives. We have to live up to the things they're expecting us to do and we can't. You see, Fear demoralizes me, it breaks me down, and it diminishes God in my life. Fear undermines my confidence. And the greatness and the goodness of God in my life just seems to disappear. Uh, let's just bring ourselves to, to watch and participate in Sunday serv services. We, we, we come on a Sunday, we, we switch on and we make sure that we've got enough data to do this because we want to. We love Jesus and we've given our lives to Him. Well, I hope you have. And yet we bring with us this giant of fear into the place where we are worshipping God. For some of us, it's on our own, in front of our, with our phone in our hand. For others, we sit and watch this on a screen. We accommodate fear here. And we take fear with us wherever we go. How can that be? And all this does is it keeps on diminishing the glory of God in my life. I'm still looking at 1 Samuel 17 and we're going to be looking at this passage of scripture for a long time. So, so read it, read it often, read it week by week um, and just refresh yourself. This is the stand standoff between the Israelite army and the Philistines. We see the standoff as a standoff between good and evil. And in this backdrop, this giant of fear comes out day after day to taunt the people of Israel. Goliath was a champion who came from the city of Gath. He had a track record. He was not just a big guy, he had a history. And his history was that he was undefeated. He was the destroyer. He was the champion destroyer. And this champion from Gath stood up to the people of Israel every day for 40 days and demoralized them. And the giant of fear demoralizes us too. Goliath was a big guy. The armor alone on his body was 60 kilograms. The head of his spear was 8 kilograms. His shield bearer walked in front of him to make sure that nothing was coming their ways. And for 40 days and 40 nights he came out every day challenging someone to come and fight against him. He started the day. And he ended the day taunting the people of Israel. And so does fear do this to this every day. They don't take a day off. If I read um, 1 Samuel 17, 
Um, and I just stop at two verses for a moment. Verse 11 says that the people were dismayed and terrified. The text reads, When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. They were terrified. Verse 24 says, And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, Goliath, they fled from him and were dreadfully afraid. But what does this look like for us today? We sing the war cries. I know, I do. We praise the Lord. Yes, I do that too, on a daily basis. And then out comes this giant. And death is a very real possibility. Death is probably the one thing we fear the most. This giant called fear just keeps on standing in our way. We need to know and understand that we cannot take the giant of fear down in our own strength. When we see ourselves as David with, a, with our slingshot, then we need to know that it is Jesus who is on our side. We hear things that terrify us. We hear things that cause us fear in our life. Goliath did that every day. He spoke all the things that he would do. But David, David heard from God. David trusted God. David heard the glory of God from the heavens. And when he looked at Goliath, he realized that God would help him take down this giant. Victory doesn't come in man's strength. It comes in the strength of God. You see, Jesus needs to come into our story because Jesus takes down our Goliath. All those things that terrify us can be taken down by our Jesus. When he takes them down, they're dead. Jesus didn't come to this earth for nothing. He came so that we can have life, and life indeed. He came to set us free, free from the terrors that come in the night to wake us up. See it like this. You, you, have, you see this vicious dog tied to a stake with a strong industrial cable holding it. It only comes this far, and if we stand outside of its reach, we can't be bitten. We see the viciousness of the dog, its eyes glaze over with anger, but it can't get to us. You see, the giants taunt us, and they do, but they don't have the ultimate power. Jesus has the ultimate power. They may scare us, but they can't tear us apart because Jesus is there. When we see and hear reports, fear comes. But when we see and hear Jesus, we are built up. You see, faith is the antidote for fear because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hearing and seeing what God can do shuts up the giants in our lives. And when we see and hear our Lord we start to stare down this giant of fear. This builds up our faith. And our faith shuts up the giant of fear. We all know the story of the disciples going out to sea to fish. And Jesus stays on, on the shore to, to spend some time with, with the Lord. We, we read this in Matthew 14, 22 to 33. Sometime later, while they're fishing, there's a great storm that builds up. And Jesus comes walking towards them on the water. The disciples are terrified. They cry out in fear. But Jesus speaks to them and he dispels their fear. Peter then calls out and says, Lord, if it's you, please tell me to come to you. And Jesus calls Peter. He steps out of the boat and he goes to that voice that calls him. But when he sees the wind, how do you see the wind? You see, that's how fear comes. We don't see it. When, Jesus, when Peter saw the wind, he began to sink. 
And Jesus picks him up out of the water. Why did you doubt me? Oh, ye of little faith. That's what Jesus says to Peter. Peter had got a lot closer to Jesus, or was it Jesus getting closer to Peter? And immediately Jesus bends down and pulls him out of the water. Do you realize that Jesus has got you? He's got us in his hand. We don't need to fear. Just picture this. Just picture Jesus holding you. He doesn't send anybody else. He does it himself. Peter had lost eye contact with Jesus and as soon as he couldn't see Jesus, he sank. It's the same with us. We need to keep Jesus in eye contact. There are a couple of things that I'd like you to remember. Please remember that God is able. God works instantaneously in our lives. He doesn't keep us waiting. He didn't keep Peter waiting. We need to confess that our God is able to save us. Please say it with me. God is able. No one can stop Jesus from, fu from fulfilling his plan. Jesus is always bigger than the things that try to scare us. God wants us to know that. God wants us to know that he is there and there is none like him. Jesus speaks to us about worry and fear. Our Father in heaven knows what we need. He clothes the lilies of the field. He looks after the birds of the air. And God wants to take care of us. The second thing I want you to remember is that God is good. Sometimes we do good, sometimes we don't. We're not always consistent in what we do. Sometimes we find ourselves out on a limb and we fall back to the things that we knew. We all have a history. We all got our BC days, our before Christ days. The days before we gave our lives to the Lord. We know how easy it is to go back there. When God doesn't go back anywhere, God is good. And his goodness endures forever. God is not a man that he should lie. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. His love for you will never change. He's good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And this is something we need to hang on to. Claim that in your life. People are not always good. We have our days, we make excuses, we let each other down, and we change with the wind sometimes, but God, God doesn't change. He's not blown or tossed about by things that happen. We can rely on that. We can hold on to Him with all our might. And the third thing I want you to remember today is that God is with us. God is with us. When... When, when I'm having a bit of a hard time, when, when I have giants in my life that, that stand up and sometimes just uh, make me cower with fear, I go back to the Psalms. It's the most beautiful psalm in Psalm 16. I'd like to read to you from verses 7 to 11, where David writes and says, I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh will also rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul in Sheol, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life in your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures for everyone. If you have the giant of fear rising in your life at the moment, please memorize this song. I set the Lord before me. This is David. And this drives out fear. Because he's at my right hand, I will not be shaken. 
God is present with us all the time. My heart is glad. My tongue rejoices and my body also rests secure. Why? Because God is with me all the time. We all know what it's like when we lose sight of someone. My parents always told of the story of how I got lost in Kirstenbosch Gardens as a little girl. I'd wandered off and when I turned around I couldn't see them. They said I screamed so loudly that the whole of Kirstenbosch knew where I was. Well, the same thing applies to us today. Do you get scared when you lose contact with eye, eye contact with Jesus? Do you miss your quiet time? Things make us busy. You skip your quiet time and you think you'll catch up, but then life happens and I find myself out in the open and that's when I'm in the danger zone. I need to keep eye contact with the Lord. We need to keep the cross in our line of sight all the time. God always brings me back to the cross. He doesn't leave me where I am, but He brings me right back there. And then I remember that He is able, He is good, and He is with us. It's time for us to face up to this giant of fear and start talking back. Tell this giant that he can't do all the talking, just as Goliath did it to the Israelite. It's my turn now. And I'm going to talk back to this giant of fear in my life. I've got God with me. I come at you, giant of fear, in the name of the Lord God Almighty, not with weapons, not with man, not with anything else. I come only in the name of Jesus. You see, I can replace worry with worship. It might have to be that I sing all day and, and worship all night long. Um, if that's what God wants me to do, then that's what I need to do. Two-minute devotions don't seal the deal. We need to worship the Lord. We need to take Jesus with us to fight this giant. For 40 days and 40 nights, you take your smartphone, uh, take your Bible, um, take the Lord and read the Psalms. Start at Psalm 16 and read the following psalms. Make it your mission to memorize some of the passages in the psalms. Just listen to this. Um, I'm going to read you just a couple of verses. Um, in Psalm, <clears throat> psalm 18, David writes and says, I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength in whom I trust. For who is God except the Lord? And who is a rock except my God? It is God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He sets me on high places. He teaches my hands to make war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. Psalm 19 says, The law of the Lord is perfect. Coveting the soul. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever, more to be desired than, than gold. Yes, more than fine gold. And I am keeping them as my great reward. Make it your mission to memorize some of these passages in the Psalms. Read them slowly. Memorize the, virtue, the verses that, that catch your attention and that really speak to you. You see, this is the antidote for fear. Jesus is right here. Right here next to me. Jesus, please tell me again and again how much you love me. 
and then please tell me again. I pray that as you face this giant of fear, that you will also realize that the Lord is right next to you. He doesn't expect you to do it on your own. You don't need to do it on your own. He loves you. And he wants to face this giant with you. Please just take him at his word. Take the Psalms and read them back to yourself day after day. Don't give up on that. And so I challenge you for the next 40 days <clears throat> and 40 nights if you want to, to read the Psalms. To take this incredible wisdom that God gives us and make it your own. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you his peace. Now and forevermore. And from my home to yours, God bless. Goodbye.